Gasoline and diesel engines on this generation are all over the top sophisticated and with good potential for tuning. Accordingly, the chances of serious problems on versions before restyling and serviced, no one knows where, are very high. Structurally, the engines illustrate the typical approach of the Volkswagen concern of the 2000s. There are a lot of expensive pipes for cooling systems, vacuum, and crankcase ventilation. All this is conditionally disposable, with fittings and requires attention. Injection control systems are complex on both diesel and gasoline engines. There are many unexpected design complications where the typical Japanese car owner has never heard of them. For example, an expansion tank with a silicone bomb, a package with silica gel, is laid on the restyling of it. If you ignore the instructions for replacing the tank, you will get contamination of the cooling system and a non-working stove. Most A4 copies are equipped with engines from the EA888 family of three generations. In fact, there are more than a dozen versions, but we will divide them only by generations and years of production. It is believed that Gen 2 engines are the most problematic, since they did not solve the problems of the first generation with the timing, but there were surprises with the piston group. And Gen 3 motors are supposedly beautiful and reliable. In fact, Gen 3 now also gets into repairs quite often, but the reasons are different. Before restyling, they installed engines of 1.8 series CABA, CABB, CDHA, CABD, CDHB, and 2.0 series CDNB, CDNC, CAEA, CAEB, CFKA. After restyling, the engines were 1.8 CJEB and CDHA, 2.0 version CDNC, CDNB, CAEA, CAEB, CAED, CPMB, CPMA, CFKA, CNCD. This diversity is due to the fact that Gen 1 and Gen 2 units exist both in versions with one phase regulator and with two, with the AVL system, Audi valve lift system, when the intake valve lift is adjusted, and in varying degrees of forcing for different firmware and markets. Gen 3 motors have all versions with two-phase regulators and AVL, but there are also enough variations. In addition to motors for Euro 4 5th standards, there are also ULE V2 slash Sulev that meet American requirements. The most exotic 1.8 Gen 1 and Gen 2 variants are the 120 horsepower CABA and CDHA. The most running among Gen 1 slash 1.8 are CABD, 170 horsepower and CABB 160 horsepower and the Gen 2 series is CDHB for 160 horsepower. Motors 2.0 Gen 1 are represented only by 200 horsepower CCTA, Gen 2 CDNB at 180 horsepower and CDNC for 211 horsepower. On imported American cars, CAEA and CAEB mainly fall under the American standards ULE V2. The rest is exotic, for example, CFKA bifuel engines meeting American toxicity standards. Gen 3 engines with a volume of 1.8 liters are primarily represented by the CJEB, 170 horsepower, and CJEE. 177 horsepower series with CJED being less common. Units 2.0 in this generation are usually with the CNCD index and 225 horsepower. It is best to check the engine model in the PTS or independently check the number on the block. But on some cars there are hybrids with mixed cylinder heads, crankshafts, piston groups and oil pumps. Sometimes this is the result of tuning. Sometimes it's just a consequence of repairs with the world on a thread. Distinguishing Gen 3 from the first two is quite simple. They have a completely different intake. But the difference between Gen 1 and Gen 2 in practice is negligible. It all depends on who repaired it and how, and which piston and timing are installed. Often you can find out only by opening the unit. The 3.2 Kala and 3.0 Kaka, CCBA, CREC and CRED engines belong to two generations of the EA837 series. The supercharged ones are often designated as EA837 TFSI EVO. These are V6 motors in an aluminum block, 
with a timing chain drive, moreover, very complex and located on the flywheel side. Atmospheric motors have one phase regulator versus two for compressor ones. If you think that naturally aspirated engines of this generation are reliable, you are mistaken. Both on the A4 and on the A6, these power units died for a variety of reasons. In comparison with them, the second generation EA888 is just a model of durability and maintainability. Moreover, in terms of reliability, the new series are not so different from the old ones. The explanation is obvious, Alusul is not friendly with overheating and detonation, it does not like low viscosity oils and coking, inactive thin rings. And most of the modifications are games with operating temperature, firmware and catalytic converters. There is no question of any reliability of old engines with such a sleeve manufacturing technology. And the repair of the cylinder block is very expensive, the assembly is thin walled, the sleeve is complex and the chances of getting a lot of trouble even after a ruinous repair are also high. We also wrote about the evolution of the engines of this line in the review of the Audi A6 C7. The atmospheric 4.2 FSI on the RS4 sometimes lasts quite a long time, and yet it is difficult to call it reliable. On the one hand, the temperatures are lower here, and the care is appropriate. On the other hand, the 4.2 FSI has the same design and very similar problems plus the driving style is often harsh. Diesel engines are represented mainly by the 2.0-liter EA189 series. Rarely found newer EA288, the main advantages of which include significantly faster warm-up and softer operation in all modes, as well as strictly electromagnetic nozzles. On the EA189 generation, the first motors were equipped with very capricious piezo injectors. There are many models in total, Kaga, CAGB, Kaha, CAHB, CAGC, CMEA, CJCB, CNHA, CNHC, CSUA, CSUB. It is worth avoiding only the early versions with the EDC 17C14 ECU with piezo injectors. Versions with balancer shafts have a nuance with wear on the oil pump drive hexagon, it should be changed when replacing the timing belt with a new one. Otherwise, there is a chance that it will turn. The balancers are on the unit's Kaha, 170 horsepower, CAHB, 163 horsepower, Kaga, 143 horsepower, CAGB, 136 horsepower. Early versions may have piezo injectors. Engine CJCA, 143 horsepower, CJCB, 136 horsepower, CMEA, 143 horsepower, CNHA, 190 horsepower, and others are already equipped with electromagnetic injectors, but there are almost no variants without balancers on Audi. Does not occur. It is curious that the engines of the EA189 line were installed on the Gazelle Next. Rare V6 diesels belong to the EA896 series. These are 2.7 comma CAMB, CGKA, CGKB engines on early cars or 3.0 CCWA, CCWB, CCLA and CLAB, CDUC, CKVB, CKVC, which went until the end of the model. Inside the series, the motors are divided into two generations. We wrote in detail about the essence of the changes and the problems in the material about the Volkswagen Touareg 2. The units are reliable, with a long resource, but extremely expensive to repair. On the A4, this is the choice of fans of a sporty style of movement for fans of diesel fuel. The brakes are good even in weak versions of the A4. Before restyling, most cars were equipped with front discs with a diameter of 314 mm, and after 320 mm, versions of the S4 relied on 345 mm brakes at all. In any case, the caliper is single piston, with a floating bracket, simple and hassle free of course, if you monitor the condition of the guides and their anthers. On the rear axle, the discs are simpler, non-ventilated 300mm for the simple versions and 330mm with ventilation for the S4. The handbrake drive is electric, with a gear motor directly on the caliper. 
This option is reliable as long as the housing of the gear motor is intact and moisture has not got inside. It covers the most vulnerable spot of the rear caliper, the axle oil seal. No problems with tubes and hoses have been noticed yet, but the ABS system fails relatively often this generation does not have the most successful wiring and sensors. It is prone to fractures inside the insulation, and sensors fail more often than usual. But, unlike machines on the MQB platform, the sensor here is an old model, relatively simple and made separately from the wire. On this generation of the A4, for the first time, levers of a new geometry were used in the front suspension. On previous generations, they were interchangeable with A4 A8 levers from 94 onwards. Fundamentally, the suspension has not changed, the same four levers and a steering knuckle. But the length of the upper arms was increased, plus the front shock absorber is now nominally inverted. To implement such a scheme, an additional light alloy bracket was introduced and the anti-roll bar rods were simplified, the problematic tie rod mount was removed from the steering knuckle and a simpler eye without a clamp was dispensed with. Alas, the upper arms still have the same pinch bolt with the same souring problems. The wheel bearing is installed not with a press fit, but with four bolts. The modernization made it possible to make the lower arm shorter, move the drive shaft a little back, thanks to the curved bracket, the shock absorber now does not interfere with it. All elastic elements have become slightly lighter and more compact. The new shape of the rear arm allows the installation of even wider tires. It is a pity that the new knuckle turned out to be as unsuccessful as the first light alloy versions of the 2001 model. The upper control arm tie bolts are just as tightly sour in it. And the ball bearings of the upper arms are less reliable. On previous generations, the levers are almost eternal. In any case, there are cars produced in 1999 to 2004 with still original parts. On the A4B8, their resource has decreased to 120 to 150,000 mileage typical for suspensions. The suspension resource as a whole remained acceptable. Upper control ball joints are no longer eternal, and on most cars with mileage of 200,000 kilometers they have long been replaced. At the lower levers, ball joints are more reliable, but silent blocks were out already by 70 to 90,000, although this is a relatively inexpensive repair. At the same time, it makes no sense to change the levers, although many service owners are tritely bred to replace the assembled levers. The difficulty is that silent blocks in this generation are asymmetrical, with non-circular clips, and not very skilled locksmiths often spoil them when pressing. Front shock absorbers last a very long time, the main thing is that the anthers are intact. But the springs burst regularly, damaging the shock absorber cup and killing the rubber gasket. Owners of the A4 in Moscow complain that the second set of springs is often replaced by a hundred thousand. It is still highly recommended to unscrew the knuckle pinch bolts once a year and lubricate them to prevent souring. There are no cast iron fists for this generation and are not expected. Front suspension wheel bearings are often criticized, many have changed the hubs under warranty more than once. But this is also due to the use of low profile rubber. The design itself is typical and differs little from that used on other cars. In the rear suspension, everything is a little simpler. All silent blocks are interchangeable, even the ball joint, floating silent block, on the S4. Only one lever needs to be changed in the assembly. But, firstly, there are non-original analogs, and secondly, the lever is steel, so it is not afraid of repressing. The price of 14 replacement elements can be rather big in the end, but they rarely fail all at once. Most of the details go about 200,000 kilometers. The suspensions have become stiffer, and this affects not only the resource, but also the behavior on the road. The handling of the A4 in this generation bears little resemblance to the most straightforward and damp taxiing of the four of the first generation. Sensitivity is better. Steering response is much cleaner, and the suspension grips better in corners, taking full advantage of the wider tires. At the same time, A4 suspensions are probably the most comfortable of all classmates due to the minimum unsprung mass and the absence of a sore point in the form of the upper shock absorber support of Macpherson-type suspensions. The steering here is rack and pinion, 
but atypical for Audi, the rack is located in a subframe, like most modern cars. This not only improved the steering sensitivity, but also almost completely removed the dependence on the state of the subframe silent blocks. In addition, this solution allows you to make silent blocks softer and improve comfort when using low-profile rubber. It would seem that there are only pluses from such a decision. In fact, the rail located in the subframe becomes much more dirty, moisture often gets into it through the slightest cracks in the anthers. For cars with mileage over 150 to 200,000, this factor should be taken into account. Remember, there are most of these A4B8, even if the odometer convinces otherwise. In addition, the anthers on this generation are very short, they are greatly stretched, and the external fastening simply tears off in cold weather. On the fours before restyling, the steering with a conventional hydraulic booster and a pump like on Schneiva, only with a rear mount and a tube turned in the right direction, plus a servotronic. The real resource exceeds 250,000 if you monitor the condition of the anthers and the purity of the oil. A typical problem is shaft corrosion due to cracks or loose anther tightening. As a result, the rail starts knocking and then leaking. This is at best a bulkhead with shaft polishing and installation of repair bushings. At worst, the rail will have to be changed as an assembly. So far, there are enough used rails, but the new ones have grown in price from 23000 to 280000 for the original. The non-original followed suit, and now prices start not from eleven, but from 40000 for the restored and Frank China to 200000 for Bosch. This is how an unpleasant feature in operation turned into a serious problem due to an inadequate increase in the cost of spare parts. After restyling, the reel was changed to electric, but the seals did not become better. And if on the left side corrosion kills the shaft and the end sleeve, but almost does not damage the gear mechanism, if you don't drive for years with a creaking and knocking rack, then when it hits the rack on the right left side, the problems multiply. Water gets on the thrust bearing, the motor rotor and on the threaded part of the shaft along which the recirculating balls move. If you drive for a long time with a damaged anther, then moisture can penetrate into the electronic part. The thrust bearing on the right side is mainly subject to corrosion, it begins to characteristically creak under load, and the balls crunch in the grooves due to dirt and damage to the rotor and shaft. If the bearing is restored, and this is a non-trivial task due to non-standard dimensions and frankly unsuccessful layout solutions, then with small shaft and rotor caverns, the mechanism requires only cleaning and lubrication, but the characteristics of the amplifier will differ from linear ones. In most cases, this is not so important. In case of serious damage to the rotor, it is almost impossible to restore it, you will have to change it. A special piquancy of the situation is given by the fact that the rail on almost all specimens also flows through the wiring glands. Any cracks in the case at the control and power connectors or damage to the connectors themselves and wiring lead to moisture ingress. Almost all rails have traces of board corrosion at the output connectors, but in most cases these damages do not yet affect performance. Alas, time will pass and the output of rails of this generation will become massive. The transition to spline connections of the cart and shaft, drives and gearbox did not make them any more problematic as did the rearrangement of gearboxes. CV joints are quite reliable if you do not tune the motors to the maximum. Yet 170 and 300 horsepower, these are completely different loads on all nodes, including shafts. Well, the increased load on the rear gearbox unloaded the front drives, it became much more difficult to cut them off even with powerful motors. Four-wheel drive drive is as reliable as possible, but it all depends on the driving style. On a tuning copy and with a good hook, you can turn off both the gearbox and the drives. There are few fours on the mechanics in the population, about 5%, but complaints about breakdowns, surprisingly, are found. The thing is that half of these cars are imported from Europe, often these are Avant station wagons with tow bars and decent mileage. The rest of the specimens are seriously tuned, they practice quattro starts and other extreme exercises. 8K box bodies are not interchangeable with older generations. Here is the layout with a separate external drive shaft of the front axle and the main pair of the front axle in the side housing. 
the left-wheel drive shaft runs straight through the box bell. Boxes for front-wheel drive modifications are relatively inexpensive, literally for 20000 you can buy a working unit. But all-wheel drive are more expensive than other machines. But there is a life hack. Look for a box from Q5 and A5 four-wheel drive is more common there, and the price of boxes is lower. The main malfunction is a howl due to the destruction of bearings during overloads. Shaft failures are rare. Synchronizers are expensive, but you can pick up analogs from less rare versions of manual gearboxes. In general, there is nothing particularly terrible. With careful operation, you can only get to the expensive dual-mass flywheel and clutch. Well, if you take a car for races 0, 200 or 100 to 200, then it makes no sense to grieve about the high cost of transmission parts. And then suddenly there is the DSG DL501, which copes much better with such loads. If you need a car for such tasks, then it makes sense to buy a model with DSG initially or swap it. With all the variety of automatic transmission series on this generation of A4, they are all old friends. Multitronic 0AW for front wheel drive, 6 speed ZF0B6, 7 speed DSG 0B5, and 8 speed ZF0BK 0BL for front and all wheel drive. Multitronic 0AW is the second generation CVT from Audi, which we talked about in the A6 review. In short, the design has been seriously optimized, for high load modes a switching mode has been made, the car accelerates due to changes in engine speed, and the gear ratio of the variator changes in steps under traction. This made it possible to significantly increase the limits on the transmission of torque and not lose an efficiency. The main weak point of the box is the speed sensor, with which only an unsuccessful heat exchanger competes in capriciousness. These problems are solved quite successfully, the sensor on the board is soldered, the cooling system is redone. The chain resource is high, over 300,000, bearings are reliable with timely oil changes. Much depends on the purity of the oil, it is better not to neglect it, because overhaul is very expensive, and the price of contract units is high. Most of the boxes are killed by banal towing. It does not use a torque converter, but a starter pack. If the oil pump is not working, it burns out, and this automatic transmission does not have a neutral gear. Dirt from the burnt starter pack spreads throughout the box during the first start, clogging the pump and solenoids. The 0B66 speed automatic is actually a clone of the regular ZF6HP28A in the AL651 version. The ZF box was discussed in detail in the Jaguar XF review. The front-wheel drive version has its own housing with a built-in gearbox for the front axle, but this does not add any special features in operation. In fact, the troubles in the form of constant wear of the gas turbine engine blocking linings and oil contamination due to the algorithm of operation with constant slippage and the operating features of the mechatronics are exactly the same here. In general, this is not the worst automatic transmission, you just need to change the oil more often, try to keep the oil temperature within 50 to 80 degrees, unfortunately, for urban conditions, this often requires refinement of the cooling system, and avoid overheating, which drastically reduces the life of numerous rubber and plastic structural elements from oil seals from hydraulic accumulators and spacers. Boxes of this series are not compatible with older versions of the ZF6 HP for Audi due to the layout, but this does not affect the price, there is a large selection of used ones, and repairs are on stream. The only pity is that the difference between the actual cost of repairs and what the owner pays is usually a multiple. However, this applies to almost any automatic transmission repairs. The 0B5 series robot is better known as the DSG DL501, and this is not the most successful of VAG's preselectives. But at the same time, it is designed for very high torque and can handle any of the motors available on this generation A4. Unfortunately, the 48K are quite early versions of this box. In the review of A6C7, the link above included a description of this automatic transmission. The DL501 remains a rather capricious and expensive version of the DSG to maintain, mainly due to expensive components and less prevalence than the transverse gearboxes. 
However, the willingness to digest high torque forces to a certain extent to come to terms with it. The design and operation features include a relatively small clutch life, the need to frequently update the oil in the hydraulic part, regularly change the solenoids, replace or thoroughly flush the ejection pump without waiting for disc warping and accelerated wear of the starter pack. Now the repair of the clutch has been mastered with the replacement of sealing rings, the restoration of the cover and seat of the bearing, the clutch drum and flushing of the ejection pump. Also, the new mechatronic software does not allow box overloads. If you wish, you can install tuning firmware with them the chances of putting the box will increase, but you will get a noticeable improvement in the dynamics of the car. 8-speed automatics of the 0BK-0BL series are boxes manufactured by ZF, also designated AL551Q8 and AL951Q8. The index indicates the maximum torque that they are capable of transmitting normally. But these boxes are best known as ZF8HP55A and ZF8HP90A. Their design is extremely complex for a hydraulic automatic transmission, 8 gears, a 2 mass damper in a gas turbine housing, a vein pump with flexibly adjustable pressure, lightweight aluminum drum housings, a center differential with forced lubrication, and a separate oil pump. The box already has three lubrication circuits, the main circuit, the circuit of the transfer case, and the final drive of the front axle. In the most powerful versions of the 0BL gearbox, the transfer case and final drive circuits are closed and equipped with a separate oil cooler. These automatic transmissions are able to use the data of the navigation system to optimize switching, sharpen to work with the start-stop function thanks to the use of a capacious hydraulic accumulator with electric cocking. But enough ads. Now about how all this splendor endures the hardships of service. At low loads, read, on diesel and gasoline engines 1.8 and 2.0, and even with a neat style of movement, these machines are an example of the triumph of technology. Economical yet reliable. Even when changing the oil every 60,000, there are many live automatic transmissions with runs well over 300. Mostly from Europe, of course. Not surprisingly, many sing odes to the reliability of this unit. But for those who like to press the gas pedal to the floor, the opinion about the box is completely different. When using the potential of the motors, heating the unit in traffic jams, and a sharp style of movement with constant acceleration and deceleration, the box overheats. The locking clutches and brake package B, which is responsible for auto neutral and traffic jams, wear out intensively. The oil pump lifts up, the rubber elements age, the planetary gears howl, the two mass damper makes a dull thud, creating also high loads on the entire transmission mechanics. Any hits when switchings and half of the drums are sent for restoration or replacement due to pitting on the soft surface of aluminum. Usually the breakdown of a very reliable automatic transmission is a big surprise. The box is indecently expensive to repair. Any mistake can ruin its delicate mechanical part and drive the cost of repairs into space. In our typical city mode, the negative scenario is realized very often. Oddly enough, the A4 of this generation can be found thoroughly rusty. Rotten front and rear arches and perforated outer metal threshold? If you search, you can find this. Corrosion points at the junction of the front fender and bumper, at the sill in the front or at the junction with the fender. A lagging layer of anti-gravity on the wing, under which there is deep loose rust. Meets regularly. Rot on the edge of the trunk? Available on almost all cars. The only question is whether the outer side of the cover is affected or the process goes unnoticed on the metal next to the license plate lights. The front edge of the hood peels off regularly since it rusts slowly. But the hood is steel, and if you start the process, it will be covered with deep craters and begin to rust from the inside. Unfortunately, this generation was painted even worse than the B7, and the thin metal of the outer part of the sills and fenders easily rots into holes if paint swelling is not immediately eliminated. Just a couple of years and the outer panel will have to be changed. Who said like a ziguli? In addition to the quite obvious places that are mentioned above, it is worth carefully inspecting the windshield frame in the upper parked cars with extensive corrosion in this place regularly come across, sometimes the frame needs to be welded. 
Most copies priced up to a million, even if it is a car after restyling, have cosmetic defects. First of all, at the leading edge of the sill, where the attachment points of the wing to the sill form an excellent center of corrosion, as well as at the corners of the front and rear arches. But a weak paintwork leaves a lot of room for damage even on new cars. No wonder this generation is often rolled in ceramics, like Japanese cars. The coating is delicate and the metal underneath rusts very easily. If you buy a neglected copy before restyling, then there are high chances that after stripping the numerous blisters of paint you will see holes. Or, shortly after the purchase, find out that the car was poured before the sale, so as not to drop the price too much. At some point, the prices for the B8 dropped to 300000 so they didn't stand on ceremony with them in terms of service, remember this. A look at the four on the lift is reassuring in most cases. The bottom is almost completely covered with plastic panels, while there is a layer of mastic on it, and it is intact under the plastic. It is a pity that the outer surface of the thresholds at the places where the paws of the lifts and jacks are installed suffers a lot. Often the metal there has jams and perforations, and the neglected corrosion of the leading edge of the threshold is also clearly visible. Even the area around the gas tank looks good, some dry shallow rust near the seams and on the brackets. But if you remove the lockers, it becomes clear, weak external paintwork affects not only the appearance. There is a lot of rust in the arches. The rear edge of the front arch near the threshold is often covered with rust all over. From the entry point of the tubes on the bottom to the very threshold, the edge is replete with small pockets of corrosion. Corrosion near the threshold amplifier plug is especially dangerous if it rots, then water penetrates into the inner layers of the wide threshold amplifier, and here it will not be possible to get away with replacing only the outer part made of thin metal. There are many reasons for this state of the metal of the arch and threshold. There is a threshold shelf with a wing mount where dirt accumulates, and a bunch of dirt behind the locker itself, and a washer reservoir under the wing when it is filled, water flows from above. On the passenger side, the arch is usually in slightly better condition. But at the same time, pay attention to the threshold itself, it literally rots from the inside. Moisture easily enters through the wing mounts. The upper spar of the body, or rather, the bracket reinforcing it at the junction with the motor shield, also rots at the seams, there is clearly little sealant and the locker is poorly installed. Yes, and water gets in from above, from the junction of the wing. The inner edge of the front wing also rots, albeit slowly. In the rear arches, the situation is similar, but in the front parts, and edge corrosion at the door is common. Yes, and inside the rear of the threshold there is often already moisture and rust, and then only the arches cannot be overcooked here. The rear edge at the junction with the bumper suffers mainly from the outside. On the inner part hidden from the eyes, the sealant resists the spread of rye for a long time, but if they try to repair the arch and the sealant is no longer factory, then there are high chances that the entire shelf under the bumper will be perforated. And, of course, the most unpleasant thing is the corrosion of the junction of the outer and inner arches. Who scolded Opal Vectra be there? At the age of 10, everything was fine in this part, only by the age of 15 there were visible problems. Let me remind you that the metal of this Audi is surprisingly delicate. If someone damaged the sealant from the outside, water got inside the arch, but the anti-corrosive was not done, then there are high chances that the wing will have to be changed, or a repair arch should be welded in. Pay attention to the corrosion of the seams along the edges of the thermal screens near the central tunnel. For machines of this generation, this is the power part, and deep corrosion is unacceptable here. So far, there are no serious problem areas inside the body. Drainage from the over-engine niche is now as simple as possible, but it itself is narrow and does not collect much water. The interior is usually dry, but the trunk can be humid due to the not very successful installation of the rear lights. And the niche in which the battery is installed actively corrodes, especially if the car is idle for a long time. With regard to breakdowns of other equipment, everything is not bad so far. Immediately, it is worth remembering peeling chrome on all external elements a trifle, but unpleasant. 
The optics almost do not fade, thanks to the beautiful DRL, and the yellowing inner eyelash is a problem mainly for esthetes. As well as some debris inside, something is wrong with the ventilation of the headlight. DRL LEDs are quite successfully repaired, and they serve for a long time. In the first five years after the release of the model, such a breakdown was expensive, but now the services calmly disassemble and assemble the headlights. Rear LED optics break more often than we would like, but the lights are also opened with a Dremel. The plastic of the bumpers is good, but the mounts are capricious, and they remove the front bumper on almost every MOT that loosens the fasteners. So slightly sagging bumpers scratching the paintwork of the wings is a typical disaster. Power windows tenacious, rarely breaks cables. But the replacement is troublesome, and it's better to change it with a set with guides. Unlike previous generations of A4, here you can't remove the door frame and calmly fix everything on a workbench. The frame is fixed, access to the mechanism is only through small holes inside the door panel. Wedging of the outer handles also happens due to moisture getting into the bracket mechanism, and this is treated by replacement or bulkhead, the steel axle corrodes in the aluminum lever. Unfortunately, all this requires disassembly of the door. Failure of keyless entry handles is more of an electrical problem, as the original versions are not sealed and corrode over time. A bit of corrosion on the aluminum of the mirror brackets and a dying photochromic finish are also expected troubles. You can slightly reduce the chance of wedging by lubricating the steel washer of the retaining ring and the spring inside. And at the same time, it is worth regularly lubricating the mirror rotation locking pin so that it does not turn out the auto-folding mechanism. The mirror itself in the original peels off from the base, but it is treated inexpensively. Well, remember, cars with a full range of options have more than a dozen wires on the mirror. There is something to break here. The hatches are not leaking yet, and the mechanisms are working properly, except that the drains can be clogged. Oddly enough, there are already problems with sagging door hinges, since the adjusting plates are widely available. The fuel filler hatch is unsuccessful, the locking motor itself is almost the same here as for cars on the MQB platform, only there is also an emergency opening cable. The resource of the block is 4 to 5 years, and then it stops snapping off in winter, and lubrication usually does not help. But replacing it is not as easy as with MQB. The plastic insert of the neck is disposable. To remove it, you will have to pierce it at the attachment points. Although there are craftsmen who simply dismantle its left side and put the locking gear motor in place. When buying, many people forget about the exhaust system dampers and checking various assistant blocks, and the price of restoring these elements can turn out to be cosmic. Indeed, in this car there are many elements of the new generation. And they often buy the B8 generation just for them. Salon, one of the strengths of the model. The future owner usually does not immediately find out about potential problems with the body, but an excellent interior is a good reason to buy such a car. It is with a fashionable design and comfort level. In this generation, the A4 has a very good climate system, good sound insulation, very good ergonomics and seats. Unless very tall people, the adjustment range of mechanical seats may seem small, but there is no such problem with electric ones. The multimedia system fits perfectly into the interior. It is immediately clear that the large screen on this generation is no longer an option, but a mandatory interior accessory. There are many multimedia options, from the basic chorus and concert, to MMI versions with 2G, 3G, and even 3G+. Moreover, systems from the B9 generation are put here, and all versions are expandable. Modules AUX, AMI, BT, phone connection for calls, BT A2DP, for music playback, jukebox, internal storage, navigation, TV tuner, and CD changer are options. The salon has good wear resistance. Up to 200,000 miles, wear and tear can be successfully counteracted with leather and fabric care. The seats and all the handles hold up very well, as do the door card armrests. The steering wheel wears out often earlier but is easily changed or altered. There should not be any extraneous knocks and breakdowns if the interior was carefully sorted out. 
There are a lot of interior options, but fabric is the strongest, but options with inexpensive eco-leather on the side parts of the seats lose their appearance first of all. The climate is strong, except that the rotary knobs of the encoders cannot withstand careless handling. They are broken not only on the climate, but also on the multimedia system. The weak point is the heater fan. Already after 120,000, many are faced with howling, and someone changed the fan during the warranty period. The dampers are quite reliable and generally do not fail, like the air conditioner. The compressor resource is 250 to 300,000 kilometers, but it is with a valve, without a clutch, so you can't drive with an empty system. At the same time, the laying of pipes on the condenser is not very successful and requires careful fastening of the lockers and all elements of the bumper wiring. The condenser is delicate, does not like stones and highway conditions very much, often by 10 years of operation it needs to be replaced due to damage to the honeycombs. This generation has a relatively well-oiled software part, but the complexity of execution and the abundance of wiring increase the price of ownership of age machines. All blocks here are self-diagnostic, up to heated mirrors. But the wiring of the A4 door alone would be enough for the full electrification of the Ziguli, and there are more electronics units of the same door than in other old foreign cars. At the same time, the quality of the wires is not very high, and breakdowns of the flexible parts of the wiring in the corrugations occur regularly. The blocks themselves are quite debugged, even on early machines there are no massive problems with firmware and software. Everything is complicated by the presence of a component protection system. It is still difficult and expensive to remove. With the low price of blocks in the secondary market, you often have to pay a multiple of more for linking them. It's good that moving the battery to the trunk did without the BMW disease with the terminals and oxidation of the long harness here such problems are vanishingly rare. On cars after restyling, operating in mild hybrid mode, battery wear has greatly increased and there are more problems with electronics due to voltage drops. So in most cases, dubious hybridity is simply turned off in the service. As well as start-stop systems. A number of problems are introduced by frequent maintenance of engines, as this complicates the life of the motor wiring and especially the connectors of the engine shield. Minor problems in the form of oxidation of the washer and antifreeze level sensors in the expansion tank and glitches of the oil level sensor, failures of cameras, door handles of the keyless entry system, burnout of the multimedia system display backlight lamps, flooded rear view cameras and all round visibility, all this happens, but in most cases are not too expensive. It's just that there is a lot of things in the car, and electronics eventually require repairs or maintenance. If you don't really care about additional costs and you don't worry about the bodywork, then the 8K generation Audi A4 is not the worst option among classmates. There is a spare tire in the large trunk, tall passengers sit freely in the rear seats, optional folding rear seat backs are provided, and there is a utilitarian and stylish station wagon body. Four-wheel drive is really complete, permanent and hardy. And the motors are both reliable and very powerful. If you try, you can even pick up something that combines all these advantages. It is a pity, of course, that the legendary Audi galvanization no longer saves, and the base engines are not eternal. But this is in the spirit of the times.